Hey guys, today I want to talk about some standout products from 2017. So I have three categories, makeup, skincare, and perfume. So uh, let's start with skincare. So there are two face products that really stood out to me this year. Number one is the 5% lactic acid from The Ordinary. And number two is the Sunday Riley UFO oil. And both of these things I feel like helps me um, to take care of some of the texture that I had in my skin. And I really like that this is an oil, so you get that nice moisture, but it also is helping with acne at the same time. So that was a standout. And then another huge one for me was the Laneige Slip Sleeping Mask. And this stuff has saved my lips because all I wear are matte liquid lipsticks. So in combination with doing a lip scrub every morning and this every night, then my lips have never been chapped and this stuff is fantastic. It's 20 bucks, so it's a little bit pricey on the front end, but it has lasted me a super long time. So I think that it is definitely worth the price. And now I'm going to talk about perfume. I have two perfumes that, that really caught my attention this year. Number one is the Replica Beach Walk perfume. And I got this in a rollerball first. And I loved it so much that when the VIB sale came along, I had to pick it up in a full size. And I absolutely love this. It's my favorite scent for summer. And I'm really glad to have the big one. And then I also, for, especially for the winter, have really been liking this Tory Burch perfume. And this is the mini size. This is how I tried it initially. And now I have a roller ball that stays in my purse and I have this little one that stays in my vanity. But I really like this one as well. Right, now we're gonna move on to some makeup products. So I definitely want to give a shout out to the L'Oreal blending sponge. I have had several beauty blenders in the past, but I like this one just as much, if not better, because I think that it, it holds up a little bit better than the original beauty blender, and it's a, a whole lot cheaper, so I really like this sponge. Continuing on with the face products, this was really the, the year of Tarte Shape Tape, but I think that this BH Cosmetics Studio Pro Concealer is just as good as the Shape Tape and it's way less expensive. I have mine in the shade 100.5, which is either the lightest or second to lightest shade and it's a good match for me. I just don't find this to be quite as um, drying as the Shape Tape under my eyes, so I really like this one. And the last face product that I have to share with you is the Bare Minerals Invisible Bronze, and I have mine in the shade Fair to Light. And when you look at it, it doesn't look like that it's going to show up as very much, and it doesn't, which is why I like it. Um, I'm someone who's always been afraid to use bronzers because of my pale skin, um, but this, it really is what it says, that it's, it's invisible bronze, so it doesn't go on um, too much at once, and so it's easy to build up, and it really does give me a little bit of a bronze without going overboard, so huge fan of this. Uh oh, I forgot a face product. I forgot the Maybelline Master Camo um, Color Corrector and mine is in the shade Pink. And I have been using their Urban Decay Naked um, Color Correcting Fluids. And I think this one, again, is just as good and if not a little better and it's a lot cheaper. I actually really like the Click Up Pen on this one as well. Now let's talk about those lip products. So I, I only have two, uh, two lines that really stood out to me the whole year, um, and they both happen to be from the drugstore. So one is the Maybelline Superstay liquid lipsticks and oh, matte ink liquid lipsticks, and I have several different colors. This is in the red shade called Pioneer, but and this is the one that I wore on my wedding day because once you put it on, it does not go anywhere, and it w really will last all day. It never dries down to a real matte finish. It does stay a little bit sticky on the lips, but that doesn't bother me because it, because it is so transfer resistant, and, and I just think this is a really, really good lip product. Um, I, like I said, have several colors and I have enjoyed all of them except 
This one, this purple color is called Believer, and this one was no good. It was streaky, and I had to put a ton of layers on just to get it opaque, and then it felt horrible once I had all that product on. So, wouldn't recommend it in the, the shade Believer, which is purple, but I would recommend it in all the other shades. And the other standout lip product that I have are the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Lipsticks. And this one is in the shade uh, Heartbeat, but I've, I have all of them from the pink range, and I have their bright red, and all of those colors that I have tried have been excellent. So these are not super drying, but they are surprisingly transfer resistant for how comfortable they are. So I was really impressed by these, and I continue to wear them all the time. Alright, now we're going to get into eyes. So um, my standout brow product was the BH Cosmetics HD Brow Pencil. I use mine in the shade Blonde. and. This one, there's nothing super duper special about it, it's just that it's way cheaper than what I was using, which is the NYX Micro Brow. Um, so if you, if you like the Anastasia Brow Wiz, but you're looking for a cheaper alternative, um, then the Micro Brow is a good alternative. And if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to that, then this BH Cosmetics one's, one is really good too. I actually just bought uh, 10 of these and that's all I bought from BH Cosmetics website was just 10 eyebrow pencils. So I really do like this one a lot. And then uh, this is the Milani eyeshadow primer. And the reason this is a standout product to me is just because kind of like I've said with a lot of these products that this is just a really good product that takes the place of my more expensive one. So I've been using either the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer or the NARS eyeshadow primer or the MAC Paint Pot and Painterly and all those were working just fine but this works just fine too and it's way cheaper. So I have no problem with this. I think it's great. Would highly recommend. And then for eyeliner, I really like the Lorac Front of the Line Pro. And I have mine in the black shade. And the reason I like this is because it's a brush tip liquid liner, and I prefer that over the felt tip liquid liners. And uh, this, it lasts for a really long time. It, it doesn't deposit too much product at once. And then as far as mascara goes, Probably not a surprise uh, if you watch a lot of beauty videos, but the L'Oreal Lash Paradise really is a good, very good mascara. I happened to wear, this is the waterproof one, and I wore this on my wedding day as well. And it, it really does make your lashes look nice and voluminous, but um, you know keeps the curl held decently well throughout the day as well. And then the other standout mascara for me this year was the YSL The Shock Mascara, and I don't have that one anymore because I finished it. But that is probably the only high-end mascara that I would repurchase besides maybe the Urban Decay Perversion and or the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara, because I like both of those as well. But the YSL The Shock um, really blew those other ones away. It's really good. And Lastly, I'm going to go over a handful of standout eyeshadow palettes that I had for the year of 2017. So let's start with um, the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Edition eyeshadow palette. So <clears throat> I had the original uh, version of the Carly Bible palette and for whatever reason I just wasn't super impressed by it. And I had actually decluttered it and given it to one of my friends, but when the um, deluxe version came out, it just you know had some more shades that spoke to me. So this is what it looks like. There are way too many highlighters down here. I can you know can kind of use you know these three highlighters as you know true highlighters, but um, but I understand that they were catering to they're trying to cater to all skin tones and not just mine. Um, but I would, you know, I could have done without just all these highlighters. But I do really like the quality of these shadows. I like the mix of mattes and shimmers, and I like the tones. There are a lot of warm tones, but you, they also have those pinks and purples in there as well. So this is a, a really good value in my opinion. And another really big palette um, that came out this past year was the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, and this 
palette, as you can see, has a ton of warm colors in it, and but it also has some cooler tones, has a good mix of mattes and shimmers, and this is actually the only Morphe makeup that I own, so I can't compare it to their other eyeshadow palettes, but I think this quality is just fantastic. So they really did a nice job with making the mattes really blendable um, and the shimmers have a good pop to them. I just think this is a really, really good palette and it's also a really good value. All right, and my last big palette that I have to share with you is the Sephora Pro Warm Palette. So I did purchase the warm and the cool versions of this and I do like the cool toned version as well, but the, the warm toned version just really speaks to me. So you can see there is a lot of variety within the warm tones. You can really kind of do any any warm look you want. Uh, maybe would have liked to see a little bit more uh, kind of cranberry tones in here. But this, uh, just looking at it, really reminds me of the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette, which I do not have because I cannot bring myself to spend more than $100 on an eyeshadow palette. But the quality in here was really nice. I thought the mattes were soft and buttery and easy to blend and the shimmers showed up really well too. So really nice job with this palette. Right, and lastly, I just have a, a few, you know, smaller palettes to talk about that I really enjoyed. So the first one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism palette. And this, you know, doesn't have, you know, really everyday kind of shades in here. Well, there are some, but for the, for the most part, this, you don't look at this and see this is an everyday palette. But the reason I like this is because it inspires me and it makes me kind of think outside the box and it pushes me outside my comfort zone. So uh, when I look at this palette, I feel inspired and I feel playful and, and I really like that about this. And it's very good quality too. Uh, I do not have the subculture palette, um, but I hear that this was much better than the subculture palette. I do have the Modern Renaissance palette, and I would say that the quality between the, this one and the Modern Renaissance is comparable. Right, another one I was really impressed by this year was the Too Faced I Want Candy palette. And my one complaint with this palette is that um, you can see it's a little bit domed on the top here and there, it, the closure isn't very secure and there is no mirror in here. So this is not a very good uh, travel friendly palette, but it is really cute. Um, it smells good. Yeah, I, I like the scented palettes. I like the Too Faced chocolate palettes and the peach palettes and I like the Tarte is adding this kind of vanilla chocolatey scent to their palettes as well. And this one has a, a nice sweetness to it. Um, but the reason I like this palette is that it's good quality. Every shade in here is good quality. I have no complaints with any of these shades. Um, and I also like that there's such a good variety. So you can see that there are warm, more warmer tones over here. They've got, you know, some uh, cooler tones. They have these nice uh, there's a shimmery purple and some shimmery pinks that are in here that are really nice. And uh, I think that it's easy, really easy to get a complete look with a lot of different color schemes with this palette. So I've been really enjoying this one. And then last but not least, I did want to mention these Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes. So I don't have any of her larger eyeshadow palettes. Um, but when I saw that she came out with these smaller ones, I wanted to check them out um, to try out the formula and just because of the, the color combinations really appealed to me. So she came out with four. I didn't, there's a brightly colored one that I didn't buy, but I did get the Smoky Obsessions, which looks like this. You can see it has uh, four mattes and five shimmers. And then I got the Warm Brown Obsessions, which has eight mattes and one shimmer. And then I also picked up the Mauve Obsessions, which has six mattes and three shimmers in it. So I was really impressed with all three of these. Um, the, the smoky one is probably my least favorite just because um, I'm, not, I'm not just a huge smoky eye lover, um, but they are all very good quality. And from what I understand, the pan size in these palettes is actually the same as the pan size in her full size palettes. It's just that these are not spaced out um, and the ones in her full size palettes are. 
And so from, from what I understand, then you still are getting a lot of product even though it's all kind of compressed into a smaller palette. So I think for travel purposes, you know, the magnetic closure is really strong on these. Um, you really could just, you could take one or two or all three of these um, to travel with and you have a great variety of colors and they do feel pretty sturdy that they would hold up um, during travel as well. Right, so those are all the products that really stood out to me in 2017 in a good way. What products stood out to you in 2017 in a good way? And what are you looking forward to trying in 2018? Let me know. Have a great day. Bye.